small steps for big change. One weapon melted down never goes back into society again. Two weapons melted down never go into society again. Melting down each weapon, using that metal, not only in an actual product, but by removing that piece of metal, reduces the stockpiles in our world. There are huge stockpiles all over the world. So the small steps in the Peace Angels Project are to take the weapons and to give jobs for youth. Those two things, my good friend Greg Boyle says, there's nothing that stops a bullet like a job, and that is the truth. It's not an unknown. It's all jobs and education and education and jobs, and I would add respect in there as well. So with every gun that we melt down, with every nuclear casing we melt down, with every landmine, cluster bomb, AK-47s, tanks, any weapon that we use globally, needles. All this metal does is symbolize the human axiom of war to peace. Of itself, it's only metal. But because each step is important, incremental step to success in creating a better world for humanity, it takes many people to destroy one weapon. It takes me, it takes essay recycling, Sims Metal Management, it takes um, law enforcement to contribute, it takes the young people to give them up. There are many, many, many steps. And in creating a peace angel, there are even more steps. Working to test the metal, to make sure it doesn't corrode, to, and the corrosion would give the opposite message. You don't want it to turn red and black, you want it to be shiny and reflect so that human beings remember that we're the ones who are going to make this world the way we want it to be. I work with the top law enforcement and government um, leaders in requesting weapons and melting them down. Everything is very uh, protected. We received 8,800 weapons December 15th this year from Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, um, Los Angeles Police Department, there were undercover police officers, helicopters, SWAT officers. It was a very profound and moving experience. And I've been asked about the young people, whether they see a venue to giving up a weapon to participating in creating a peace angel, because that is the ultimate goal. And I have, I can honestly tell you, I have had wonderful experiences with young people in community settings where the young people did want to give up a weapon and have made a commitment to um, changing their life, to uh, use the Peace Angel for what it's good at, which is a good reason or excuse for shifting your life from one that's filled with danger and destruction to one of going to school. It's always one of my favorite stories. There was a couple stories. One was a young man I was drawing, the Latino Peace Angel. It was right before I went to Chiapas and was at the Peace Talks. And uh, this young man came up to me after I was drawing for a while. He was a waiter. And uh, I always question myself as to whether we've done any good so far if this has been helpful in any way so far, before the monuments go up. So I never know. And this young man came up to me and he said, Miss Avola, you know, is that me in the drawing? I started laughing, you know, I thought it was great. And he said um, how he had changed his life and how his wife was now going to college. They had two children. He was in medical school, this young waiter. and. He thanked me for what we are doing with the Peace Angels. And I'll never forget that because it was a far greater gift that he gave me that day than I could ever have hoped for, which was this, just the information and the encouragement that this process may have been helpful for young people to shift the way they see their lives and go into a, a very profound and powerful uh, 
family building and life building a series of steps. So that was a wonderful experience. The other experience was also in East LA, was um, we invited a, a room full of young people. We didn't know how many there would be. And about 45 kids came to Homeboy Industries to um, go over what the Peace Angel is. It was actually this very Peace Angel and whether the young people would be willing to give up a weapon to create the Peace Angel for Los Angeles. The very first five-foot Peace Angel will go to Boyle Heights, which is a um, building that's a jewel building, the tech center for the city of Los Angeles. And 100% of the kids said they would. Now I know that says, you know, saying it is one thing, you know, being in a room is another thing. But to watch the young people step up was very encouraging that at least a, a portion of the young people would change their lives and claim it and go forward. Um, the young man who had come in there uh, that really had hoped to work with us was killed within the week. We have to always remember that um, these are neighborhoods where life does hang in a balance and there really are young people at risk. It's not just a term. I've had young people in the South Bronx want to give me weapons. Um, obviously, everyone is asked to give them through law enforcement. The district attorney has a wonderful program, a gun buyback program that we support 100%. In South Africa, uh, we worked with um, Reverend Dale White, and he gave us a very good notion, which is to use the churches to have them receive the weapons. My hope is to spread this message and to ask the young people, all of the young people, to claim their lives, to get into school, to go to get a job, all the things that we're going to help them do as well, uh, to, to make a, a change in our world. So I feel very strongly that the Peace Angels Project is where the rubber meets the road with peace.